Greetings, everyone, and Great here with another Age of Powers 2, Age of Powers 4 replay. It's one on the bottom right side as the pink Mongols, who have killed Jordy. It's one on the top left side as the orange Roos, we have Liquid Demu. And since we do have a Roos player on the field, let's switch out of caster mode. And let's go ahead and see how many bounties. And all of these deer are close by in one little area there, so you can get... Boy, one counts like to collect up all of those deer in a nice safe location. Exotic Doggo does go down there on moving around. Does find some more of these wolves. Very, very nice. Now I've got the Kremlin being put out by Orange. Oh, here. What's I got? Potentially early horsemen. Yeah, I do have early horsemen in the field trying to overrun these. Uh, what's it called? Scouts. We got these scouts now being forced on the back, and now we do have the Deerstone being being put on the field. The Kremlin will be very useful in dealing with these early horsemen, or the early horsemen, and right now he has 310 trade bounty. There are still two foreign on the map, which could grant him another 150 bounty. I mean, we need to find a couple more wolves in order to get out his tier 3 bounty without the need to use of trade house. We now have these scouts pushing way forward over here. We do have, of course, the two horsemen plot on the field. I don't think he spent a stone onto them. I could be mistaken about that. And down here, someone's being built by three villagers. No additional, no stables in Plana Field. Looks like the roost play may, there's a stable that's going for some early knights. Maybe just defensive early knights. Horsemen moving around. And now I've got the gear pushing around for as well, trying to set up to get better wood collection. Over here, got the three scouts moving around. They're still generating some health. They could kind of overwhelm that con. Now I've got the feudal age for the Mongol player. He can go out for his catch checks relatively soon. And now the Mongol, the con does have a sharp firing on the move capability. Got a single horseman here. The horseman's coming over to respond to these scouts. There's a speeder over there, and now they've got the early knight to pull on the field. Right now, the Mongol player, he has no food, no gold. He's not even collecting up gold. He is not eyeing for Keshiks now, is he? Going straight for the wood collection upgrade. He's going straight for the town center, second town center. And with these early knights in the field, well, early knight on the field, it's going, he's going to be having a hard time to expand out. Or just going to expand right there. He needs to start collecting this gold. You have a, the deer stone pushing him forward, which does provide the yellow network around it. Potential case for here. We've got a good number of horsemen. He does. The current still early horsemen. He does not even have the gold to get the uh, regular horseman upgrade. So these guys are incredibly weak. They don't have. They also have one less pierce armor, which doesn't really matter in this moment of time. But they are significantly weak against these early knights. These two early knights probably can deal with this entire force no problem. Do not have got the gear trying to redeploy out to this gold deposit there. And now it's going to take time to clean up these boar. Very, very nice. I wonder. Let's switch out back out of him as well. Let's get the plus 75. Give him some additional gold there as well as getting out another early knight. Let's find the second town center there. And the, act and the arrow fire will be painful with these horses with only one pierce armor. Getting off the other boar will not net him tier 3, but I think it's going to for this other early boar now. The higher health scout does attack first. And draw the fire. Horsemen, early horsemen now advancing on forward. And these deer being so close to each other does provide a great amount of food collection without needing to travel so far. 
start to force down some of these mining camps. And since he killed off the boar, he could actually get the uh, food collected next to the deer as well. Do not have a blacksmith being pulled on out. Now we've got six regular horsemen on the field. He has the regular horseman upgrade. I think he spent stone on those horsemen as well. I'm not a big fan of continually spending stone on horsemen like that. Now we've got the knight engaging, getting some damage there onto these horsemen. They, of course, get additional health, uh, 15 health, one extra damage. Being upgraded from early horsemen to horsemen. Granted, the upgrade is pretty cheap. They represent the cheap effects. And extra uh, pierce armor. Boggle speed arrows not off cooldown just yet. But it's doing a good job of distracting these knights away from these uh, forces. You now have the Keshiks, a pair of Keshiks being put on the field, as well as already a pair of Keshiks on the field. And now we've got these early Keshiks, or not early Keshiks, but Keshiks on the field. There are four knights here, as well as a bunch of scouts. The scouts can draw a lot of damage. When the early horse does go down, now the Keshiks are going to make their advance. He should have his arrow off cooldown. He does have the arrow off cooldown. And also, the knights could turn around and engage his force. He does have a significant amount of knights in this region and remember these are mostly just horsemen not knights we've got another pair of keshiks on the field so we've got four keshiks five horsemen i think pink should have another superiority now we also got a group of horsemen on field which they should they do some damage for the horsemen not a whole lot keshiks of course do have three three armor like the knights Airstone's providing some good benefits over here and does provide a little bit extra income near that tower as well. Let's draw a falcon there. Very, very nice. Now some of these villagers will get hit, none of them goes down. Some arrows do hit on the cash over here. And Orange has a significant force here. Does he have siege engineers? We do not see siege engineers. We got uh, some cash in the field. Let's just going to take time try to torch down or there's not... Oh, all these villagers could go down. But speaking of villagers going down, he does have a lot of space for these villagers. He does get some cash here to defend, but Orange could lose a good number of villagers here. Another one of those early nights has go down. Many of these uh, Keshiks and horsemen have gone down as well. And those of the Khan himself also went down. Or so that's his force down here. And due to the two towns here, that's enough space for 25 villagers as well as provide some good arrow uh, damage support. So you've got also this outpost here, which does have an upgrade of arrow slits. And does want to get out of there. Finds a volley onto this early knight, getting some good damage onto it. Early knights are advancing forward. They will not find any attacks there on those villagers. On the last of these of this wildlife, oh, there's still some more deer over here. That's too significant. He always bought a hunting cabin over here, which also provides some gold income. Pink's now base of four, Keshik's engaging. Got a line of powers being plotted there. He may be eyeing for some trade. 
archers are going to get overwhelmed by these Keshiks. While Keshiks don't do bonus damage versus archer, they just simply have good armor to engage them. Horsemen, however, do bonus damage versus archers. We've got some good charge attacks there by the knights. But overall, Orange's army will entirely go down. Barring that scout. And maybe this knight as well. And that Keshek does go down no problem. Stepford out and I'll be We've got Castle Wage for the Mongol player. And that will allow him to get some extra gold. I think he went for this outpost there simply for the food for the nearby deer. The boar carcass is right here as well. I've got the outpost under fire. Granted, it's an unupgraded outpost, so it's only 100 wood. And now I do also have this gear packing up, trying to get make sure he flexes to this uh, separate out. And now he's trying to charge him forward. He does have decent defense goals here. He does get his castle, which is going, immediately going for the veteran cash check upgrade. Veteran cash check upgrade is relatively cheap. It is 5125. I wonder if the early night research is that similarly cheap as well. We've got militia charging forward. Village is going to stand to fight against the militia there. And the militia, of course, will be required by the town to the fire. The con here does receive some fire there. It does use a defense arrow before going. I don't think it actually stays alive. It does take out. Looks like a couple, maybe one or two of the villagers went down there, but mostly it looks like all the militia went down there. Now we do have this. Power being cleaned up, uh, cracked open. The villagers on the inside will be eaten. Only one villager escaped out from the tower. And now got the Keshiks engaging as well. They should easily overwhelm the early knights as well. They right now benefit has 175 health and 19 damage, 4 4 armor. And do we see any early knights here to compare them to? They do, early knights do still have more damage, they have the same attack damage, of course less armor, slower attack speed, and doesn't have a health per hit. And now I've got the high trade house being pulled on the field. How expensive is the... Okay, early knight, uh, the knight upgrade is actually relatively cheap as well. He has less villagers at the moment. He may have lost a number of them. Both of them had had two towns for quite some time. Maybe he didn't really build as many villagers as well. Now, going for an outpost here, as well as the gear. Just going to be collecting up that deer. I wonder if that's the survival techniques. He hasn't claimed any hunting carcasses, so maybe better to go for hunting techniques. Even the stone version would be half bad. Now trying to open up this wooden fortress to collect, crack open the hard exterior to get a nice, uh, juicy insides. And it'll be nice and cooked as well with all this fortress. Let's go ahead and get the full surround there on Orange's horse. See, there's another spearman here as well, militia. But the veteran Keshek should be able to deal with the scores. And does get and not get attacked there. There is a boar they're trying to collect. They collected most of the boar. There's still some food remaining. Plus, you still have to protect the villagers in general. And it does take a brief time to collect up some more boar. He's right now not going for the more boar. Got some crossbow in one field as well as some spearmen. And the veteran and the uh, wooden fortress has gotten a bit of repairs, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we do got the survival technique being pulled on the field. <coughs> Excuse me. As well as now Wheelbarrow and Venom Horseman. Like Orange is going from arrow slit research, including the wooden fortress there. The boar is almost collected up. I probably would not have gone for the wooden uh, for the arrow slits on that one. 
but maybe going for one on this stone mine wouldn't be half bad. Now the Keshiks are moving over to that stone mine. He's trying to harass around this town. So I'm thinking there's going to be wood there, but in actuality, there's going to be stone to deny. He's out of... Doesn't move forward just yet. Yeah, he does not know where the stone being collected. And remember, Knights and Keshiks don't have great spotting range there. So he got a bit lucky there that he didn't get spotted. A single Keshik over here. And will spot these uh, villagers there. Does actually put a stab on one of the wounded ones there. Speaking of stabbing a wounded one, does get a Keshik there as well. Again, a number of these villagers uh, some severe damage onto them. And now I'm going to be hitting some of these other force uh, villagers now. More of these villagers are being taken on out. Does looks like Pink's going for more Pierce Armor research. Or a Pierce Armor research will reduce the damage output from these uh, wooden fortresses from 6 to uh, from 2 to 1. Though we do got Arrow Slits, so that does also increase the damage output by 1. Spearman trying to overrun this cash trick there, does take him out. He does find the Wolf of Stone there. He did spot it earlier, now he does take some more, another swipe at it. I'm gonna catch around some sectors. Do we see a monastery over here? There is a monastery. No relics inside. Plus a four just claimed the relic right there. And Pink has claimed four relics. Yep, one, two, three, four. This horse is a little bit wounded. And now you got this keeping plot on field. Pink is also right now collecting up this boar, which will provide us some great food. We got a pair of spring golden placements over here. A little bit interesting. Going for another gear. And it's generally easier to go for build another gear than trying to repack up one and move it around. Because trying to redeploy a gear, it is annoying. It's not forceful enough to push villagers away, so they tend to get cancelled just simply trying to be redeployed. Uh no, don't go for spring vault here. It's protecting nothing at the moment. Sure the the cap is providing 21 gold per minute, which is nice, but that's really not worth it. Khan does see some fire there, does use the fence arrow as well. There's a good number of spearmen and crossbow in this region. He's gonna need to mix up his force. I would say mana arm. It just probably more spearmen of his own. And I actually hit my microphone and knocked up my headphones. But probably Maganels, along with some spearmen of the composition against his opponent currently. This force is not falling on back, but we got this force off here, and Maganel's been pulled on field through the improved siege engineers. I don't think this one's fully built. It could be fully built. Is it fully built? No, it can't be. He also is playing some tractor trebuchets, a powerful benefit of the Mongols, is that you get the stone base and siege engineers. Other factions cannot deploy trebuchets out of their infantry units, but the Mongols can. And most factions can't deploy out Maganels. Some can, but the Mongols can as well, along with Trash Trip Chase, along with Spring Balls as well. If I were to suck on these units, as they make the Circle Dance, there is, of course, a Trash Trebuchet, which I believe is it's similar to a regular Trebuchet. I need to look at the difference between the two. I think it feels like it has higher attack speed, but generally has less bonus damage. Keeps now under fire, it is getting repaired on up. And the step redoubts over here. Do we see any improved? Yes, we do see the improved arrow. Perfect. I do like it when people go for improved arrows because it really does help out the and it's the arrow. Increasing duration from 5 to 12 seconds. And when it comes to the armor arrow, that is a massive difference because most engagements only last about, oh, about 10 to 12 seconds. 
and that will make it so you get a per basically a permanent buff the entire engagement. Uh, granted, the engagement will go on longer both for defense arrow, but that means your guys are alive for much longer. Better in case of good damage there. We do have a couple catchers. The burn world has been research. Let's get a good volley there from Magnells. And now we do have the arrow. Arrow. We've got a lot of crossbow here. This one does not have armor heavy targets, so there's too many crossbowmen. And a lot of these crossbowmen are quite damaged thanks to burning oil. It's good damage there. Keep. Builders team overran. Does lose a spring ball there. Looks like one of the uh, pinks of Magnells do go down. Good volley on for those. Uh, Villagers there. Now it looks like there's crossbow versus crossbowmen. Not a great game either, but overall the reload arrow was very useful. And plus he still has the uh Yon network here to get these guys improved movement speed. Or force is always being cleaned on up. You have the single screen ball still here. Try to torch down this banner ram now, and a lot of these villagers are quite wounded. And uh keep those go down there. And it looks like the battery ram will be torched down as well. Got another wave of infantry being pulled up by Pete. Now we've got the high arm being researched or being pulled up by Orange. We do have, of course, his Imperial Age means. And we do have. Oh, that's Pink actually covering that sacred site. And Orange going for the sacred site, even though that's on each other's side of the map in general. Got some Spring Gulls being pulled on Kyoto as well. More Maganels. It's very nice. It's going for a lot of. Making a lot of use of the siege engineers. Good sand to get south some battery ramps as well. Battery ramps do a pretty good job of drawing fire, honestly, from air from uh archers. If you just have them just charge forward, if you want to just uh flex all of this nearby forces and start aim moving forward, it actually can do some reasonable work. Do not have the greased axles being researched. And this gear needs to push a little bit farther forward. Ooh, what are these trebuchets doing? They got a move forward. We have another keep tempting being pulled on out by orange. And we've got a couple villagers in this region. We have one less villager in the region. Spring balls being hit on the spring balls. Traction trebuchets need to fall back. We do have a keep here, and I think it does get cancelled before the traction trebuchets fire. And we've got expansion forward. He does not have enough uh, food for getting his own POH up, so he's pretty far on resources. So we'll have to take advantage of he's investing a lot into the technology, so he's getting all of his high armor research. So he's going to that. Magnol finds a great follies there, the one Magnols do go down. And it looks like Pink's Magnols are just A moving forward, gains the damage in the hunky cabin. Fortress does go down there. Maganel's find a massive folly there. Gives great damage on those forces. I think has a really nice choke point there. These forces are trying to aim for but they can fight on Pokemon up. Crossbow is trying to get up ran. This is the con is trying to has been redeployed. Orange has of course spawn out his militia there, so I'm over on these forces. He does have some old spearmen here. And Brain hits down the infantry forces there. More people forces being pushed forward, only one Magnol remains. It does have a traction to his traction trebuchets still up and going. If it gets a great damage on these forces, Spring Ball Space Forward does take a lot of traction trebuchets now. And I'll come to Kansas trying to be torched on down as well. He still has a small army here, but do not have control sleeping pulled on the field as well. Now starting to retreat on back. They reinforce their hands together on up. He's starting to pull out some more reinforcements as well. And he still does not have an uh, imperial age, nor does he have enough food for it. He does have less villagers, but only by four. The deer is still being cut over here, so he's making use of that food. He has a little bit too much wood there. 
He has a good number of uh, pastures at the moment. I still see some live sheep, so he may have enough. He may just need to get guys off of wood. Skyrims will help out, but not this moment. I should go. Should have gone for some more Maganels on the uh, banner ramps because right now the banner ramps are not going to provide much in this next engagement. We have some towers here. Trying to find some more reinforcements. Strolls in the front field as well as archers, crossbowmen. And right now, Pink is going straight for crossbows, and Pink does back of the game now. Just too many crossbows in general, I'd say, for by Pink. This is Anne Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.